Commissioner, as I rise to support to, in a very special manner, thank the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee for the good work that they put in. And Honorable Speaker, also thank you, because as uh, Speaker, when you conveyed on the 15th of November 2022, conveyed the petitions, the four petitions, by the Republican Liberty Party, Reverend Dennis Nduiga Thubi, Geoffrey Langat, and Award Steve Jerry, the petitions for the removal from office of the four IBC commissioners. Honorable Speaker, I was thanking you because you did give guidelines to the committee on how they would conduct their hearings. And indeed, Honorable Speaker, because we have all followed the proceedings of the JILA committee, they did adhere to your guidelines, and uh, uh, following those guidelines, Honorable Speaker, the hearings were quite orderly. I know many Kenyans have asked why is it that these hearings were even being televised on TV, and some have argued, Honorable Speaker, that all that needed to do was for the committee to look at the petitions quietly, but with your guidelines, Honorable Speaker, you did uh, give guidelines that required that the commissioners who are being petitioned against be afforded the right to appear in person or even through legal representation and the right even to cross-examine the petitioners under oath over all the matters that they had uh, raised in their petitions. Honorable Speaker, and indeed, I am privy to proceedings of the committee through the chair of the committee that indeed all the four commissioners were afforded that opportunity to appear either in person or through counsel. But they chose not to appear, Honorable Speaker, but they did send, uh, a number of them sent their counsel to represent them. And Honorable Speaker, members, we remember the contention on the jurisdiction of the committee of JLAC on this matter and the ruling by the Honorable Chair, the Honorable Murugara, that indeed the committee had jurisdiction to hear the petitions. And I wish to confirm to the House and to the nation that this committee has a mandate to hear and determine though the four petitions pursuant to Article 251, sub Article 3 of the Constitution, and our own standing order, standing order 230, sub Article 4, as the chair of the committee directed. However, Honorable Speaker, members, you remember that Commissioner Irene Masit did not make any appearance as advised by her legal counsel who wrote to the committee through the clerk of the National Assembly via the letter dated 28th November 2022 informing the committee of her withdrawal from the proceedings. But the other commissioners did, besides fighting on the question of jurisdiction, when they appeared before the committee, because it was in full view of cameras, their counsel withdrew from the proceedings of the committee. But subsequently, they also submitted to the jurisdiction of the same committee when they sought again to appear to cross-examine the petitioners, but of course with a lot of delaying tactics, Honorable Speaker, and I must commend all the members of the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee who conducted themselves with a lot of decorum and even afforded, there's one sitting, Honorable Speaker, that looked like it was a law school class. I think the Legal Council had anticipated to find accountants like me before JLAC but were rather surprised to find seasoned lawyers and senior lawyers like Wakili Moreu, Wakili Osoro, Wakili Njeri, uh, the member for Kirinyaga, and others, including the uh, Honorable Mutuse, and uh, the chair, Sir George himself, Honorable Speaker. And Honorable Speaker, the members of this committee burnt the midnight oil to even have this report ready, and we must commend them. Honorable Speaker, the other thing worth noting is that in the history of this country, we have had IBC commissions that have been fought left, right, and center. In fact, there are people who say the most dangerous job to take up in this country is one of being a commissioner of IBC. And indeed, it's because of what 
the political class in this country has subjected commissioners of IBC to. Honorable Speaker, I'm saying this because it is worth noting that this is the first time in the history of all independent electoral and boundaries commissions that we have set up in this country that we are seeing due process being followed in the removal or otherwise of a commission or commission as Honorable Speaker. <laughs> Members will recall from the times of Chesoni, the times of Kivuitu, the times of Isaac Hassan, commissioners in IBC were removed through street demonstrations and riots around town to force commissioners out of office. Therefore, we must commend this committee that and the country that our democracy now has become of age that we remove people from offices in line with our statutes and our constitution and i must commend this house honorable speaker and we must be proud that as a 13th assembly we are presiding over a process that follows due process we have not had to get anybody to the streets despite the gross violation of our constitution honorable speaker and our statutes that this commission has engaged in during the electioneering process. And Honorable Speaker, the fateful day in Bomas, Honorable Speaker, is equivalent to January 6th in the U.S., Honorable Speaker, and the attempted takeover of the capital in the U.S. And because we model our democracy along the operations of other well-grown democracies like that of the U.S., we must not, as a country, ever allow something like what happened in Bomas of Kenya on that day to ever happen again. These commissioners were going to burn this country. And it is sad, and it's rather poetic justice or ironical, Mr. Speaker, that the people who have agitated for the removal of commissioners in the past through riots and street demonstrations today are speaking about street demonstrations to protect commissioners who have violated our constitution, abused the people of Kenya, and attempted to stage a coup against the sovereign will of the people of Kenya that they exercised in a democratic, free, and fair election on the 9th of August. I have no fear of contradiction, Honorable Speaker, to state that these commissioners are indeed people who should be in the category of criminals People who wanted to burn our country, prodded by people who made them be Article 1 of our Constitution, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I said it is poetic justice that the same people who prodded these commissioners to line up and go address a press conference at Serena and afforded them the luxury of rooms in Serena and apartments paid for by the state honorable speaker because somebody believed they were above the constitution they were the law unto themselves honorable speaker the same people today have been prodding these commissioners to stay put but i want to speak this commission to these commissioners honorable speaker they know what they did was criminal they know what they did was against our constitution and against the will of the people they intended to overturn the will of the people exercised through the ballot. They know it is criminal, and they know the right thing to do would have been to resign even before getting the country to where we are and getting this house to even consider such a petition. And I want to speak to them, and I know they are listening to me. Commissioner Masid, Commissioner Cherera of the Cherera Matics, Commissioner Angaya, Commissioner Wanderi, it is time to pack and leave. You need not take the country through another painful process. Kenyans want to move forward from the August 9th elections and the consequent actions of your misbehavior at the bombers of Kenya. The actions of this commission, as Honorable Speaker, would easily have turned this country, Honorable Speaker, into a banana republic. I must commend the people of Kenya. I must commend the millions of people who voted 
for the Azimio candidate, Raila Odinga, and the running mate, Martha Karua, that they resisted and desisted from being incited to get into the streets by these commissioners and those who are prodding them. Honorable Speaker, we must thank and commend Kenyans that for the first time in the history of our Republic, Honorable Speaker, since the advent of multipartism, Kenyans have now seen that they can go into elections, vote for the candidates of their choice, commend those who win, and congratulate those who lose, and the country moves on peacefully. We must commend the people of Kenya. But these commissioners must also equally pay. And I want to ask this House to support the recommendations of the Jaila Committee that these commissioners indeed be subjected to a tribunal, but I would advise them to not even allow themselves to get to the tribunal. It will be a painful process for this country to take the country through a tribunal. We do not want to relieve. I was at the Bombers of Kenya, and Mr. Speaker, you were also there. You know the tension that gripped this country out of the actions of commissioners who are being irresponsible, who are being insensitive to millions of Kenyans who woke up very early to go and vote for candidates of their choice. And Honorable Speaker, the right thing to do, I want to repeat, would even not to get to the position where the committee is recommending to His Excellency the President to appoint a tribunal to deal with this matter in accordance to Article 251, sub Article 5 of our Constitution, I would encourage them to give our country peace. They wanted to destroy the peace that Kenyans had elected to live with after peacefully voting, going home, and waiting peacefully for results. For Commissioners, Honorable Speaker, who were appointed to office not so long ago, Honorable Speaker, to have had the temerity, Honorable Speaker, to do what they are doing, was a very sad day for our country, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, you remember when in the 12th Parliament, the process of appointing commissioners came to this floor. We indicated those of us who are speaking for where we are speaking, that we had not followed due process. Indeed, Commissioner Irene must sit. There is an existing court order that had only allowed her to sit in office until they were able to conduct the elections, because she was rightfully not in office, Honorable Speaker. And there is a court judgment. This is the same Commissioner who will not even submit herself to due process. And she knows she ought not even to be in office in the first place. Honorable Speaker, let me not even get into details of the misbehavior of these commissioners, but urge this House to rise to the occasion and approve this report as recommended by the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee so that it may be a lesson to whoever else will ever be appointed to a constitutional commission or to serve in any public office, that you exercise public office in trust of the people of Kenya and never at the behest or the calling of anybody who makes you to imagine that they hold powers that are beyond the Constitution. Like these commissioners were made to believe that they, there exists a deep state and a system that would fix the election. The people to fix any election in this country are the voters who wake up early to go and vote for the leaders of their choice. And Honorable Speaker, I wish to submit and encourage Kenyans to continue voting knowing that every vote will count. And never again shall any other person attempt to overturn the sovereign will of the people exercised on the ballot if action is taken against these commissioners. With that, Honorable Speaker, I beg to support and urge members to indeed support the committee's report and ask the president to waste no time in dealing with people who are otherwise criminals, people who wanted to burn our country. Set up the tribunal, but if they are willing, they can also save us from that cost of setting up tribunals. They can save the country from the pain of having to go back to what happened at Bombers of Kenya. 
on that fateful day, Honorable Speaker, by simply resigning. Honorable Speaker, I submit. The Honorable David Speaker. Yes, uh, as a point of order. Yes, uh, Honorable Gikaria. Honorable Speaker, I, I know this is a very important thing, but Honorable Speaker, I rise uh, on a point of order. I don't know whether the majority leader was uh, seconding, so that I can ask you to limit uh, the others who will be given, to be given five. Honorable Speaker, this is a very critical issue. I remember what happened in 207, and I live in Nakuru County, and what happened because of a mistake of a few individuals. What is so the point we of order? I, we, I'm just asking whether we can, instead of the 10 minutes, we can be given five minutes each. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Now, three, this three is too small. Honorable we'll have just mentioned the names of the four, five at least. Order, Honorable Thank Members, you. it is now 6.58. I'll allow you to debate this motion depending on availability of those who want to speak up to 7.58, one hour. Whereafter, I'll call the mover to reply and put the question. To that extent, I'll uh, allow debate to take five minutes per speaker. David Speaker, five minutes each.